Hey guys, welcome back. Happy Monday evening to you. As you guys see, a lot of amazing news has been coming out. Um, you know, Donald Trump recently did the interview with Laura Ingram on Fox News. He revealed a lot of good information for us in that. Um, overall, the news keeps revealing to us that Iraq's hands are tied, they're boxed in a quarter, that Iraq, in order for them to do anything internationally, import, export, trade, reconstruction, all of that, they have to change the rate. In order for them to satisfy the demonstrators, all of the demonstrators' demands are in the 2020 budget and their post-rate change steps. Okay, so the reforms as well. So everything's looking really good. Iraq just keeps actually showing us with more additional news frequently that they've got to get that rate change. Everything looks good for us. We're on the right track. Uh, a little more times needed, of course. You guys know that. The number one thing that I personally feel we're waiting on from facts is just the 2020 budget. They'll probably get. They probably only need about two bud two months to get the budget done and approved. So. They'll probably start the budget. And, you know, I want to stress something to you in this. Hear me carefully. When Iraq talks about a, something over and over and over in the news, that's usually what they're not working on, okay? And it's something that, are, that you know is pressing with Iraq and they're not talking about it. That means that very soon or shortly, they're probably going to start tackling it such as the, and I'm, what I'm leading into here is the 2020 budget, okay? Iraq is not talking about the 2020 budget that once in a great while they'll talk about it what that should tell you or suggest is that they've got it on the back burner they're waiting for the right time and then they're just going to slip it in out of nowhere kind of like they did remember the education minister just once the demonstrators started demonstrating at the beginning of october they just pulled a demonst uh, uh education minister out of thin air that's what they're probably going to do to us with the 2020 budget they're hiding it from us they don't want us to see it because it's it, it's a very important key piece to the puzzle. In my opinion, it's the last piece to the puzzle right now. Okay, so let's see what happens. That's all I'm looking for right now is the 2020 budget, though. Okay, let's get into the news. And, and what I was trying to tell you there is uh, the fact that you're not seeing or really hearing anything about the budget. They're hiding it from you. That's because they don't want you to know about it. And they'll probably I think it'll take about two months for them to, to, to start and finish. Probably the, they'll probably start it around the second half of January. Do a little bit on it sometime through February and finish it around the first half of March, okay? All right, let's get into the daily news today. All right, here we go. The news. Okay, so right here we have, here's the first page. All right, we have closing of the U.S. federal account for Iraq means the country's total collapse. And remember, guys, we're not worried about all the news. We're not going to go through all the news, okay, because not all the news is 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 really important to us okay so within this article it says economist confirmed on tuesday that iraq cannot do without de dependence on the oil revenue account in the federal reserve bank in new york indicating that the closing of the account means this destruction of the country al suri said in a televised statement followed by al akabiria that iraq has no choice but to rely on the oil revenue account at the federal reserve bank in new york which was approved by a decision of the UN Security Council. He pointed out that freezing or tampering with this account means destruction of the country. Now, I want to stress something to you. Notice how they just told you that they're telling you right here in this article, guys, this confirms something I just shared with you yesterday. I'm actually I'm kind of glad we went into this. It's telling you that the oil revenue account right here, okay? It's in the Federal Reserve Bank in New York. Remember I told you yesterday that the U.S. government has control of Iraq's wealth? There it is right there. Okay, boom. So more confirmation of what I shared with you. Good stuff. I'm actually glad they put this out. So yeah, so right here, this confirms that Iraq's oil money is in the hands of the U.S. federal government and we control it, again, because of all the corruption they've had over the years. Now it says... He pointed out that the freezing or tampering with this account means destruction to the country and can not only to the economy, noting that selling Iraq oil money in the end means transferring funds to this account. And if Iraq wants to stop this matter, it will return to what was known as of Chapter 7, which will mean that it will take place at country management by the United Nations. Al Suri ruled out the Trump administration would resort to such an option regarding Iraq. Guys, this article is all nonsense because the U.S. and and Iraq right now have no differences. Like I said, I already showed to you over the last 
about the last week that that the U.S. is actually working with Iraq to help drive up oil prices to help Iraq get out of their deficit. Okay. So anyway, but one thing good about this article is it just confirmed to us and showed factually of what of my comments from yesterday, where I told you that that the U.S. has has Iraq's wealth and money in their possession, and we, the U.S., control their money. It's it's here in the United States under the U.S.'s control to control and minimize Iraq's corruption. All right, Al Fatah or Fatah, whatever the American forces. Circumvention of its exit decision will lead to mil military confrontations. Okay, we're, we're not exiting, guys. This is all more lies. The government is negotiating to keep U.S. forces with the NATO to avoid Parliament's decision. Okay, here they said that the Parliament, Iraq's Parliament decision, guys, we're not being removed from Iraq. We're not going to even go into this article. It's more BS. Parliamentary Security and Defense, Trump's deputy, secretly arrived in Baghdad to visit the Assad base. That was one of the bases attacked by Iran last week with uh, missile strikes. The Parliamentary Security and Defense Committee confirmed today, Monday, that Vice President Pence went to the Al-Assad base in Anbar after, <coughs> excuse me, after he secretly arrived at the capital Baghdad last Friday. A representative source told the news that U.S. Vice President Mike Pence had arrived last Friday at Baghdad International Airport in secret. Pence was transported to AIN Al-Assad Base in Anbar Province via Apache planes to see the situation after the Iranian bombing of the base. It is noteworthy that the Iraqi security sources told the news last Friday that there was a state of alert around the Baghdad airport and the proliferation of American planes and armored vehicles noting that that there is a rival and departure of high-ranking American figures without reaching more accurate details. All right. Pompeo will work with Iraqi leaders to determine the most appropriate place to deploy American forces. All right. U.S. Secretary Mike Pompeo announced that the United States intends to work with the Iraqi leadership to determine the most appropriate place for deployment of American forces in Iraq. This is a generic article, guys. It's just saying what we're going to determine the best place to set up military, like a location for our militaries and bases within Iraq. But as you guys know, we already have, I don't know, two or three there. Parliamentary Security and Defense. Trump's deputy secretly arrived in Baghdad, visited Assad's base last Friday. We know that. That's, that's not anything new. The Parliamentary Secretary and Defense Committee confirmed today, Monday, that Vice President Mike Pence... He went to Al-Assad base in Anbar after his secret arrival in the capital, Baghdad, last Friday. A representative in the source told the news that U.S. Vice President Mike Pence arrived last Friday. He arrived at Baghdad International Airport in secret. He added Pence was transported to the Assad base in Anbar province via Apache planes. All right, this is just a repetitive article. Let's move on. Close to Al-Assad reveals that the fact that Sadr is that saw this this gentleman right on the left the gentleman on the left is actually related to solder noted look at their faces their faces even like their eyes and everything look a lot of like i think he's solder's solder has nominated this that that young man to head the government and he is um i think he's solder's son something like that i read something where i know for sure they're related but i'm trying to figure out for you what they're how they're related here that oh it's, it's his sister's son, so it'd be his nephew, okay? So anyway, um, Sauter wants his nephew to head the Iraq government. But remember, guys, Sauter flapped his lips all through last year, and every, nothing he said happened. None of his demands were met, so all of his, every, all of his words were nonsense last year, so don't put a lot of stock in what Sauter says. The House of Representatives voted on a law to end the reading of, of two draft laws. Now, this article's, I want to stress something to you through this article, because over the last few weeks, Iraq News put articles out where they were talking about, they were saying that a caretaker government cannot approve laws. Boom. This right here, they voted on laws. Okay, they, they, did, two, they did three laws today in parliament, so that's not true. Okay, the budget is just a, is, is the same as a law. It's treated as a law. So, yeah, they can do laws, all right? The caretaker government can do laws. 
And remember, they also they also worked on a couple of, of additional laws last Saturday where they, they where they did the financial management law as well. So, boom, yes, they can do the budget, but remember I told you they're hiding the budget from you. The fact that they're hiding it, that's good. That's what we want to see. If if they were flapping their lips about it like they like they are with all this nonsense about the US leaving Iraq, the US military leaving Iraq and from the parliament vote and all that, then we would have a concern, but they're not. They're very quiet about it, which is good. All right, so in this article, anyway, so in this one they did two laws. I only want to go through uh, one key point in this because two of the laws don't matter. Um, let me find it here and I'll show it to you. That's, hold on. Okay, it's kind of right here. So, okay, it says the council voted on a draft law. I'm going to highlight this, this key part to you here so we can see this. Okay, the council voted on a draft law on the accession of the Republic of Iraq to the International Land Transport Agreement of 1975 submitted by Foreign Relations Services and Reconstruction Committees with the aim of facilitating international land traffic of transport operations and their agents through the movement of goods subject to customs seals by a simple cost-effective system and reducing delays at the border crossings and the passage of shipping containers and vehicles in international trade for the purpose of joining the land transport agreement of 1975. So that's that's kind of a good move. I mean, it, it, you know, they're just they're 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 trying to make the customs process and and you know moving goods and and trade and export items, you know, uh, through the borders and ports at a faster speed. So so ultimately that's that's good. All right, on to the next article. All right, the fugitive weapon targets the Iraqis. The security forces are unable to reveal the truth to the people. All right, Jamal al Karbali, head of the Solution Party, stressed that the fugitive weapon targets the Iraqis, noticing that the security services are unable to reveal the truth to the people. Karbali said in a tweet, Twitter, Katyusha launchers target the Iraqi bases, exclusively kill Iraqi officers and soldiers, and Baghdad Katyusha kills Iraqi families and their homes. He added that the silencer and the sniper assassinate the demonstrators and the media silently and the security services are unable to reveal the truth to the people, noting that the un uncontrolled weapon is targeting the Iraqis. Okay. International money fund, monetary fund increasing taxes on the rich fixes inequality. Uh, here are the... Monetary fund announced that raising taxes on rich may contribute to the redressing of inequality without having any any significant impact on the economic growth of the country. This was in response to the lenient economies of the global leaders such as Donald Trump, Boris Johnson. The U.S. President and the British Prime Minister have previously advocated reducing taxes on the wealth of the rich and increasing exemptions for them in order to stimulate the economy. So, what they're saying is kind of ease the, the tax burdens on the wealthy to stimulate the economy. Sauter meets with Iraqi armed factions on Iran to discuss the American presence. Yeah, we don't care about that. Sauter's a big joke. He's an Iranian puppet, big joke. All right, Barzani receives the representative of the United Nations general in Iraq. All right, we're not, we're not too worried about that. An Iraqi proposal for the future presence of U.S. forces. A government source revealed today, Monday, that it, initial proposals of the future of American forces in Iraq. There's a communication between Iraq and American governments about the future of forces in Iraq. The common desire between them for negotiations to begin and continue for months or a year. The source said in a statement of Russia Today, followed by the news, one of the existing proposals is for NATO to be in Iraq and the presence of American forces to be included in this alliance. He pointed out that the Iraqi government officials confirmed to U.S. officials their need for U.S. bases in Iraq. Parliament adopted a resolution committing that Iraq, the Iraq government to end the presence of any forces on Iraq soil and preventing it from using their territory, airspace, water, any reason over. Guys, as you know, that's that was all BS. That's not happening. All right, close to the Central Bank of Iraq opens four accounts with the U.S. Federal Bank for the purpose of starting to implement the Chinese agreement. Remember, 
I think it was around September of last year, China, a whole huge, large amount of officials from Iraq. I mean, it was a whole plane load of officials from Iraq went to China to negotiate reconstruction and so forth. That could be what this is talking about. It says the Department of Investments and Foreign Remittances of the Central Bank announced the completion of the opening of four accounts within the American Federal Bank for the purpose of starting and implementing framework agreement with the Chinese governments for import net import. I'm sorry, government's export and credit guarantee agency. The Central Bank of Iraq confirmed that in a letter addressed to the Prime Minister's office to inform of depositing the amounts of oil shipments is under the above agreement by the Sumo Oil Marketing Company in the accounts of the Central Bank of Iraq, which amounted to 418 million and 10,867 American countries and 24 cents for the month of October, the first first and the second of October. The Central Bank of Iraq called on the Prime Minister's office to inform him to start the start of the implementing of the agreement for the purpose of completing the contract with an investment company. So guys, this is an international agreement between China and Iraq, and they're they're preparing to start this. Okay, so keep that on your radar. That's that's an international step. And the problem is we don't know how China is. Remember, Iraq, you know, there's a lot of things here. Remember, Iraq does have uh, they do have the U.S. dollar. They're paid. They're paid by in the or they receive the U.S. dollar from the sale of oil. So they have tons of U.S. dollars, but they're also under IMF Article 8 guidelines where they're only allowed to use the Iraq dinar going forward. So that's a double-edged sword. But anyway, let's let's just at a simple step, let's just realize or assume they're preparing to start this and. There's a good chance, you know, it, it may have to wait wait to happen to actually until after the uh, rate change. So this, in my opinion, this is just more confirmation the rate change is getting closer. So anyway, guys, enough on that. We're in, there's yesterday's news. Let's uh, let's tear into some other news here. All right, Deputy Abdul Mahdi, stay stay is not realistic, and there's no real desire to get out of the crisis. I'm not worried about this article. Hold on, let's see if there's anything. Hold on. Let me see if there's anything good from this. I'm in the wrong. Uh... Hold on. Okay. Here we go. Uh, we already went over this article with you guys on that previous news. Let's see if there's anything good in here. More loans. The launch of the second emergency grant is linked to the approval of the budget. Let's see if there's anything in there. The Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs confirmed on Monday that the launch of the emergency grant for the second month of the unemployed is linked to the provision of financial allocations within the budget year for 2020. The Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs said in a statement that the ministry addressed the concern authorities for the purpose of monitoring the financial allocations for the second emergency grant for the unemployed, denying any launch of the grant at the present time due to the lack of financial allocations. You hope you guys see that. They're telling you right there, it says that, that they haven't issued the grant due to lack of allocations. That's because the 2020 budget is not approved. He added the first emergency grant included nine payments to those covered, and it was stressed that the ministry is hoping to resume the emergency grant after providing the financial allocations within the 2020 budget. So, yes, they told you right there they are waiting on that 2020 budget. As it seeks to include the largest possible number of unemployed people who do not appear but that depends on the amounts that will be allocated in this regard. The Ministry of Labor called on the media to avoid spreading the wrong information without referring to the official websites approved by the ministry because there are fake websites that claim to be linked to this ministry and promote false news. International companies express their desire to buy Iraqi amber. The Ministry of Agri Agriculture revealed on Monday that it received requests from international companies to buy Iraqi rice. Okay, so this is just a little bit of trade. The 2020 budget will be approved by the new government. The Parliamentary Finance Committee confirmed or affirmed that there is no legal way out to send the general federal budget for 2020 except by forming a new government, indicating 
that the current government will proceed with the disbursement of operating funds according to the the 112 mechanism. Okay, guys, the 112 mechanism was the temporary budget right here. That's the temporary budget they kept talking about, okay? Until the ratification of the First Amendment to the finance. And there you go. So they're saying that they have to use a temporary budget until that financial management law was, was ratified or amended. They've ratified means enabled. So what they're saying is that they have to use a temporary budget. This article is pretty good, guys. Let, let me let, let me break this down for you. According to the 112 mechanism, okay, until the ratification of the First Amendment to the financial management law, okay? So, um, hold on, I'm reading something here. Okay, so what they're saying here is um, that they they cannot... They're saying that they can't send the the 2020 budget to a day uh, to the to the caretaker government. That's a lie. You already saw them approve lies or laws today and Saturday. So yes, the budget's just a regular law. They can approve laws. And as we pointed out to you on Saturday, remember Mr. T shared some key information on that with us. He said there was a I think it was Section Six. He said that had to be amended, which allows them to implement the budget. OK, under a caretaker government. So they had to get that done. But anyway, the financial management law is now done. It's ready to go. That allows them to implement the budget with only with, or without a valid uh, prime minister. OK, so guys, everything's ready to go. There's nothing holding this back. So this in a way, this article is old news. All right, let's look at I don't think there was anything else beneficial in here. All right, you guys saw today I sh I showed I posted a video for you guys earlier today kind of showing you the status on the China between the China agreement and Washington. It talked a little bit about currency manipulation. That was the first video I actually did for you guys later today. The Iraqi government depo deposits more than 400 million countries to the our agreement with China in the American Federal Bank. And see right there guys. Notice how that article says uh they're depositing a bunch of money in an American Federal Bank guys. There's more proof right there that the U.S. holds and controls Iraq's money. All right. Deputy Monty's, Deputy Monty's stay is not realistic. There's no real desire to get out of the crisis. All right. We've seen that article before. All right, guys. Let's get into, I think I only have one more news article to show you. All the, all the rest of these. There's a ton of articles here, but they're not real important. Yeah, we already saw that one on the previous news. We saw that on the previous news. So let's get into the one last article. All right. Right here. Deputy attempts to grant authority to the government by referring budget to the House of Representatives. A member of the Finance Committee of the Iraqi Parliament has announced that the Sunni Shia members of the Council have demanded that the government be given the authority to refer the budget bill to the Council of Representatives, but an amendment to the internal curriculum of the Council of Ministers must be made for this purpose. In a press statement, Jamal Carr, a member of the Finance Committee of the Iraqi Council of Representatives, said that the current government is a caretaker government and it has no authority to send a draft budget law to the House of Representatives until the government begins its work. Then it will have jurisdiction. A number of members of the House of Representatives from both Sunnis and Shiites demanded that the current government be given the authority to refer the budget to the House of Representatives, but an amendment must be taken to an internal system of the Council of Ministers, since without a, a t amending the system, they cannot refer the law, Kerr said. And the media department of the Iraqi Council of Representatives published the efforts are underway to give the current government the authority to send the budget. Guys, okay, this article is all BS. I don't know if there was anything beneficial in this one. This article is all BS because it, they're saying that that they cannot, that the current government cannot send the draft budget to representatives, that's all lies. They can. Um, uh, the current parliament is passing laws, plus they uh, they did that, uh, the FML amendment Saturday. Guys, everything's good to go again. I've just told you they're hiding the budget from you because they don't want you to see it. So there you go. Everything's good. Everything's on track, moving in the right direction. Uh, notice how the U.S. financial markets keep going up. Uh, all the markets, I mean, the, the Dow's hovering right around 29,000 points. 
it'll be very interesting to see what the Dow actually does as of, um, say, Wednesday when Trump and China sign the Phase 1 trade agreement. Guys, I'm, I'll am i be curious. I, I'm going to, my in my opinion, or what I suspect the Dow is going to do is probably shoot up to probably around the mid um, – 29,000 range. I mean, it, it could go anywhere from like 29,400 to 29,600, somewhere in there. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Dow does and what the markets do. But I think the S&P in, in the first video I did today, I think the S&P might have hit some highs today. The Dow will probably spike up on Wednesday when uh, when Trump and China signed that phase one trade agreement. So anyway, guys, you have a great day. On to the next video. God bless you. Take care. Have a good one.